Welcome to this week's edition of The Lowdown, presented by Lexus. Tim Howard, Robbie Musto have got five questions between them, which I don't know, but I have 30 seconds-ish to answer them. All about this weekend's action. Robbie, you're going first. OK, uh, first question. Um, did Saturday's results uh, change your opinion or your influence on the, on the title race this season? A little bit. Little bit, it did, and I don't think it should have done. I think that's me just sort of being naive, knee -jerky. A bit knee jerky, yeah. Because if you look down the years, you get those little kind of moments where you think, Oh, maybe Man City, I'm gonna do it, and then you're like, A few weeks later, you're like, Oh, I don't think <laughs> that that was ridiculous. Um, so to answer your question, it did a little bit, but I think I probably In what way? am wrong. In that, I just thought, Oh, they're a bit fallible, yeah. maybe, maybe they're gonna finish third. I mean, I'm so knee jerky, <laughs> um, but there's some. Although, having said all that, there is something about the way Liverpool and Arsenal are winning that I think is scary if I'm a City fan. It's not just number of goals, it's sort of ease as well. Having said that, injuries for Liverpool are a concern. Tim. Okay, City, goals. Haaland, we know he's brilliant, didn't have a great day yesterday. Will he score at least 10 goals in the remaining 14 Premier League games this season? Oh, tough question. That is a tough question. Yeah. Another 10 and 14. It's a lot, it's a lot of goals. I don't think he will. Yeah. Certainly, if you did, did what happened the other day. Yeah. My goodness, that was bizarre. Um, he will score goals. There is no doubt in my mind he'll probably score next week or on Wednesday or whenever, mm -hmm. Tuesday, whenever it is they play Brentford. Um, I don't know whether this season, with the stop-start nature, with that foot injury and just not looking quite as sharp when push comes to shove, he's not going to get any, obviously, anywhere near last mm -hmm. season. And I think that's OK. He's still young. To, to have a second season as good as your first ever is, is hard, especially mm. when you're super young. Um, but it's still a lot of goals. He still scores a lot yeah. of goals. So I am not concerned about Erling. Rob? Uh, are you kind of satisfied with the way that Manchester United are building behind the scenes? Very much so. If I was a Manchester United fan, I think I would, I think I said this a few weeks ago, actually, that I would, when Sir, when Sir Jim Ratcliffe turned up, I would look back at that moment as being... Oh, that was when we began. Now, it's not going to happen quickly. This, I don't think it's going to happen at the speed United fans are thinking it will. But it's going to happen quicker than they, than they went down. You know, they, they're going to get back to where they were quicker than the last 10 years. I mean, it's going to be a few years. They've got to get the right man in charge. That now is that now. So they're getting all the men in charge in the right sort of directorial um, executive positions. But will they, which all seem to be good decisions, if they do get Jason Wilcox, if they do get um, Dan know. Ashworth, and of course they've got Omar Barada, can they get the managerial... Well, that's the next follow-up question. OK. Ten Hag, is he the right guy for next season? So is that your follow-up question? You yes, just added yeah, one into the low okay. right. Another 30 seconds, sure. Rogue. Um, Ten Hag has, has never, for me, I think I said day one, he's got mm. zero gravitas. He has never been the right man for Manchester United. Who is the right man? I've no idea. <laughs> but they've got to get him. But I think in Dan Ashworth, they have a man who identifies proper talent for the right club at the right time. Howe, Potter, all sorts. Mm. So I, I have real faith. So go back to your first question. Absolutely, they're doing the right thing. Everything's going in the right direction for the first time in a decade. Grab your table. Okay. Burnley, Sheffield United both have 13 points. Any hope of survival for either of them? No. Mm. Absolutely none. And I think they've both accepted it. Yeah. It looks, I mean, it just looks, doesn't it? Like, oh, we'll just keep working hard and, and we'll just, you know, give it another go next week. Yep. Certainly from Sheffield United's point of view, absolutely zero chance. And the hammering they took today against Brighton will just kill off any remaining confidence they had. Mm. For Burnley, I'm really stuck between, what are you doing? What are you doing? Stop it. Stop it, guys. And, and what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. And also, I'm kind of interested in what you're doing. I'm really interested in what you're doing. Masti talked about this weekend. They're fine to go down, play the way they want to play, improve in the way they want to play, under company, come back up. It's a terrible take from us. He always, he always says wow. it. You've got to you stay always up say it. in That's the Premier not a League. Terrible take. You've got, got to stay up. Oh, so you just rip it to pieces, new squad, new philosophy, yeah. new manager of next season. Stay in the Premier League. No, no, well, I don't think they've even got to that stage. They, they got to, he, has to, he has the ability, Vincent Company, to right change. Now. No, I'm not, I didn't say that. Oh. Change the way they play. Oh. Tighten it up. Do be a bit more pragmatic. Do something which gives them a chance of staying in the Premier League. At least have a fight of it. I'm but instead, you. they just go for it. What are you doing? I don't what get do you it. Once you play like Sheffield United, it's done well for them. You're right. <laughs> 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 there you go. That's what I think. Anyway, uh, don't forget. Um... Oh, what? <laughs> I, I, I can't trap. Honestly, I can't keep trap because Muscle just adds questions hey, in just, really on. nearly. Take a breath. Okay, last question. <laughs> Beans on toast oh, for lunch. I did. Your thoughts? I did. Well, my thoughts were obviously that it was amazing. But the thing about what's... Okay, is there another meal 
in the world that suits breakfast, brunch, lunch, high tea, early tea and dinner, also a late night after the pub midnight feast. There ain't, right? So you can have beans on toast, Master, you know I'm right. Timbo, you know I'm right too. <laughs> yeah, he loves his beans on toast. Is there another meal you can well, have? Well, all day breakfast. No. I mean, no. eggs. No, because eggs that's a breakfast. Pizza. This is just like a kind of interesting standalone meal that fits any moment in your life. I had it for lunch. It was it's your show. It's it's your show. Left me alone for it breakfast. I had my beans on toast. Breakfast on my own. What? I had breakfast on my own. You so did. I did. I left you until lunchtime. I had breakfast. Yeah, I know. Sorry about that, Massey. Okay. You've gone. You got all upset about that, haven't you? No, I haven't. It's okay. It's okay. You're okay. That's why I always ask about lunch. And it's, is it the future? No, you're always going to have breakfast. We know that. <laughs> the NBC Sports YouTube uh, page is where you can get all of our original content when we talk about breakfast, food, a lot. Premier League Tactics Session, two Robbie's podcasts, Premier League Update, this show, The Lowdown. Thanks for watching The Lowdown, presented by Lexus. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.